Now, today, the Reform Party issued what Nigel Farage is calling their contract with the voters. So what we're for. We're for controlled borders. We're for promoting genuine economic growth. We're for helping the little guy. We're about trying to restore some trust in politics. You might dislike what we say. You might not want to vote for what we say, but at least we do say what we mean. And we want to have an absolutely radical rethink of the way in which our public services are run. And yes, that does include the National Health Service. Well, some pretty bold ideas from the party now in second place, if you're to believe one YouGov poll. Uh, now, freezing non-essential immigration, taking small boats back to France and increasing the tax-free income allowance to £20,000 are just a few of those policies that were confirmed in this contract. Not a manifesto, a contract today. But is Reform UK in the luxurious position of, as Nigel Farage has himself admitted, aiming for opposition? and therefore affording to be less rigorous and perhaps more idealistic with its bucket of promises. Well, joining me now is William Atkinson, Assistant Editor of Conservative Home, and my panel, former Brexit Party turned Conservative MEP Annunciata Rees-Mogg, and the author and broadcaster Amy Nicole Turner. Uh, William, we're going to start with you. Um, a lot of Conservatives listening to that manifesto launch today would have heard a lot of things they liked. Well, quite, but that's because it was a Santa list um, of policies designed to tickle their bellies and show them a bit of leg. I mean, Nigel Farage has openly admitted that reform um, will do well to get about one M MP. They are not going to form anything more than the opposition, even if his most sort of wild fantasies. So reform didn't have to bother to give a serious manifesto, even if he doesn't like, particularly like that word. This was essentially, as I say, a shopping list of policies and shouldn't be taken seriously. Couldn't exactly the same criticism be applied to the Conservative manifesto? The Labour Party is saying that the same money is being spent twice. They're saying that in the Conservative manifesto, uh, there's policy being dreamt up. The first two weeks of this campaign was basically a policy a day. Well, yes, Tom, but I think it's an open secret that manifestos themselves are pretty pointless documents that survive very little contact with the actual realities of governing. And they're a good guide as to what a party want, what actually wants to do in government, and I believe one or two voters actually go away and read them. <laughs> um, but, you know, as the last five years have proved, you can have a particular policy agenda that you sell to the voters um, and are elected on, but events do boy events then intervene. Hang on, um, isn't, isn't one of the lessons of the last five years of Conservative government that if you, rev if you go back on manifesto commitments, you'll be punished for it. You'll be punished for it in the polls, as we're seeing with tax and with migration. Quite, but at the same time, you know, there were challenges um, presented by not only COVID, but also the war in Ukraine, um, which provided questions that meant that manifesto commitments had to be broken with. You know, the national debt, um, oh, sorry, no, uh, paying back the interest on the national debt yeah. now costs as much as the Department for Education. That was not a circumstance any of us foresaw on December 12th, 2019. As I say, manifestos are a very good thing to have because they at least give voters something to vote on, but they are, <laughs> they are normally hideously unrealistic documents. Mm -hmm. um, and Nigel Farage's new one is just a sterling example of the general genre. Well, let's broaden this discussion out. Uh, Amy Annunciata. Amy, let's start with you. Your general impression of today. You know what? I think William made some really good points there. And um, what I took away from it is that reform is um, it's going to be popular, but in the same way McDonald's is very popular. Seems delicious at the time, but in the long run, it's very, very bad for you. Um, it's that same type of feeling. However, I think that this is interesting because this is all of Nigel Farage's doing. It stems from Brexit, doesn't it, really? Because the Brexit fundamentally changed the Conservative Party. And then when they couldn't keep the promises that Brexit made, and they made promises in the 2019 manifesto, which, you know, took the took votes from Labour, it gave them that landslide with the promise that a Brexit was a vote on, do you want to change the status quo? And people said yes, and then it didn't change. So now we're seeing the rise of reform. But I think Nigel Farage tried to sell us some tripe before and it didn't work out. Let's not fall for it again. I suppose Nigel Farage would say he's not been in government for the last five years. But Annunciata, what do you make of it? I, I think it's a, a wish list, as William says. I think a lot of it is unrealistic, as Amy says. But I think they have begun to tone down their level of rhetoric. Um, that it's gone from we will stop the boats, we will stop immigration, we will have below net zero immigration allowed to, we'll stop non-essential immigration. 
Well, that's a very big difference. Mm. That how do you define essential? How many people do we need? How many millions might that be? That these are quite big changes. But also there's a lot of very left wing as well as right wing. It is a pure tick boxing exercise Mm. as far as I can see. What might go down well? I wonder if some of this moderation, William, might be... Nigel Farage thinking about what happens after this election. All sorts of rumours, all sorts of non-denial denials about some sort of merger. Um, Well, look, the model that Nigel Farage um, is currently touting um, is that of the um, Canadian Reform Party and the Canadian Conservatives after the 1993 um, Canadian election, where, as we've all learned in the last two weeks, (laughs) the Canadian Conservative Party was all but wiped out. Um, Look, it took... Um, two or three elections um, of uh, both parties losing to Canada's centre-left party um, before any merger happened. And it also meant that um, their Conservative Party was used to only two seats and reform gained about 50. Even on the worst um, sort of summaries of what could happen after this election, the Conservative Party is still going to have at least 70 more MPs than reform will have. If a party with about 200 years of history sold itself, or even more actually, if you go all the way back to the exclusion crisis, but nevertheless, <laughs> um, if, you, um, if a party with that much history sold itself so cheaply just because Nigel Farage gives it one fright at an election, um, I think the Conservative Party, which obviously I have an interest in continuing mm. because I work at Conservative Party... Hang on, party, hang on. The Conservative we'll Party's done this warrant. before. It merged with the Liberal Unionists. It became the Conservative and Unionist Party. Well, we Can't do another merger 100 years later? Yeah, but the Liberal Unionists had far more MPs than one. You know, Nigel <laughs> Farage is very good at attracting media attention to himself, but he's not fundamentally that serious a politician. But he's looking, you know, he's been in looking politics to get about for... nine seats, aren't they, reform? And I think they're showing the direction of travel of the political right surely in this country we're seeing the, I think but, again I hate to bring it, keep bringing up Brexit you're not you're not going to agree with this Amy but um, I, I think William might not either but I think the reason the Conservatives find themselves in this position is that they haven't delivered on being the Conservative Party they've got written on the tin and if they returned to the actual uh, theories values principles that Conservative voters and members stand for then we wouldn't be in this position. And it might be selling yourself out cheaply because uh, Nigel Farage might have one if he's lucky, might have nine if it's extraordinary. I think that's beyond any poll I've actually yet seen. But uh, MPs to 70 at the Tories' probable worst. But the Tories have a duty to listen to the voters. And that is what Mm. the party must do to recognise it has lost its way and it Mm. must realign with the right. William, a a final word to you on this issue. Does it matter if reform has five or six MPs if they have five or six million votes behind them? Well, I think that obviously the number of votes will matter. And I think the question of electoral reform will reappear after this election. But coming back on Mincialta's point, um, the Conservatives might lose one seat to reform after this election. They're going to lose hundreds to Labour and the Liberal Democrats. We had a Conservative leader during this Parliament who posed as a genuine Conservative, despite the fact she'd been a full member of the Liberal Democrats. And she was the worst Prime Minister we've ever had and the worst leader the Conservative Party has ever had. We're losing far more voters you to Labour and the Liberal Democrats than reform. You have Conservative home that more Conservative voters want the Tories to move to the right than want them than feel that they have moved too far. Goodness me, right. I'm afraid we've run to the end of this segment, but a huge thanks to both my panel and to William Atkinson of Conservative Home.